All right, well, welcome everyone. I'm gonna get started. Uh, so thank you for uh, tuning in today to today's webinar um, uh, on Altair CFD tools. Uh, my name is Drew Buchanan. I'm an engineering manager here at True Insight. Uh, while I kind of kick things off um, with a couple intro uh, slides, um, just starting a poll, feel free to answer that, that poll when you have that uh, the time. Uh, but yeah, happy to be here. So uh, today we're going to be leading a webinar on CFD. And like I said, True Insight is a channel partner of Altair. If you're unfamiliar of who Altair is, um, they are really uh, uh, leveraging um, uh, enterprises to kind of make designs through uh, simulation, uh, HPC, and artificial intelligence uh, operations. And so, uh, you know, the focus of today's webinar, we're talking about uh, physics-based simulation tools, specifically CFD within the Altair framework or portfolio. Uh, but keep in mind, we have a number of solutions. Um, my colleagues actually um, will be covering the chat. So if you have specific questions, feel free to send them. Um, you know, you may have a solution that may not even pertain to what we're talking about today within CFD. So just reach out, happy to chat further if you, um, you know, across the board, whether it's uh, data analytics, IoT, or, or physics simulation, or, or some of our other tools. So a couple things just to be aware of. Um, Altair has a number of CFD tools, which we'll be talking about today, uh, looking at some specific examples. But our, uh, our CFD tools and our structural tools are being used uh, by uh, a number of customers worldwide, pretty much every industry we touch. And that kind of goes with our CFD tools as well. So that being said, uh, let's jump into what today's agenda is going to be. Uh, specifically, we'll be focusing in on um, some of the CFD solutions within the Altair suite. Obviously, it's a, a short webinar. I don't, I'm not going to have time to cover every single tool, uh, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of some of the capabilities within the suite and some things to kind of consider when you're going through model setup. Um, like I said, if you have any questions as we're going through this webinar, feel free to send them in the chat. I will save some time at the end um, to answer some questions directly. But if you have something that pops up, um, like I said, my colleagues and be monitoring the chat and, and he'll be happy to answer some of those questions for you. Um, so uh, the first thing to kind of start with, um, Altair um, has a number of CFD tools. Um, you know, here's, you know, uh, kind of the big four and probably the primary one that you probably may have heard of is AccuSolve. AccuSolve is a Navier-Stokes solver. Um, so if you've ever used any other kind of traditional CFD-based tool, um, you know, uh, this is probably very familiar to what you've, you, you may be currently using. So looking at modeling incompressible and compressible fluids, um, really capable for steady state and transient problems and also looking at heat transfer. Uh, we'll delve a little bit deeper into AccuSolve in a moment, uh, but I wanted to touch on some of the other solvers. So Nanofluid X um, is an advanced CFD solver. It's really unique to a certain application. Um, so specifically smooth particle uh, hydrodynamic solver. Uh, so really, really good for high density ratio multi-phase solutions. So those of you who are dealing with multi-phase applications and multi-phase mixing problems, um, while AccuSolve can handle multi-phase, um, sometimes it kind of runs into some limitations. So Nanofluid X is uh, one of our tools that is perfect for that. So like tank sloshing, um, advanced free surfacing, things of that nature, that's where Nanofluid X comes into play. Uh, Ultrafluid X is one of our other sol uh, high-end solvers. This is really, if you're doing any specific wind tunnel testing, so I have a number of customers in the automotive space, um, if you're trying to look at drag coefficient or just um, external transient effects from aerodynamics, this is where um, you want to take advantage of an LBM-based solver. Um, technically, Navier-Stokes solvers like AccuSolve or uh, Fluent or uh, Star, or some of the other solvers out there can handle external transient problems, but they tend to be uh, inefficient uh, because of the framework of how they're solving those equations. So uh, uh, Lattice Boltzmann tends to be very advantageous. Um, one of the things that's really nice about it is because it's using a GPU-based um, LBM solver, it really can solve you know, full systems, full cars for wind tunnel tests and kind of a fraction of the time of if you would solve that in AccuSolve or a similar Navier-Stokes solver. Uh, lastly, Electroflow is a, a, one of our other CFD solvers. This is built exclusively for electronics cooling and design applications. 
Um, so uh, it, it really allows you to solve um, uh, thermal management problems. So if you're doing any designs for PCBs or electronics enclosures where you might have some fans, uh, heat sinks, uh, maybe some two resistor components, this is really uh, an advantageous solver um, in that regard. Um, some of the cool things about it um, versus some of the other tools out there um, has supports full kind of functionality for uh, ECAD as well as CAD. So, you know, if you're coming from Altium or Cadence, something, you know, want to bring in an ECAD file, we have that capability uh, with an electric flow. So let's kind of delve into AccuSolve a little bit. Uh, we're going to actually look at a bunch of variety of AccuSolve models, but the things that really make AccuSolve very, very unique um, are the capabilities for advanced turbulence models. When you look at a lot of um, other CFD codes, they tend to use kind of just a basic K epsilon model. That's what you'll find in most CAD CFD codes um, and in some, some lower tiered CFD codes. And that generally tends to be okay for systems with not a lot of turbulence. But when you start dealing with mixing problems, um, you start to encounter a lot of turbulence. So um, the other thing is uh, we have capabilities to leverage these different turbulence models and also take advantage of parallel processing. Again, some of the other tools out there uh, when you look at them, um, they don't have parallel processing capabilities. So that tends to be where AccuSolve has a lot of um, uh, uh, advanced capabilities for solving some advanced mixing problems or uh, species transports problems. Um, some of the other uh, really uh, capabilities there, obviously kind of traditional Navier-Stokes incompressible, compressible flow problems, but also thermal analysis. So you see uh, that little diagram below, that's an interior of a car looking at what's happening to the fluid, you know, coming out of your air conditioning fan, what that temperature distribution is going to be, does a really good job at those typical applications. Um, the specific material types built into AccuSolve um, are, you know, kind of your traditional Newtonian fluids and then also your non-Newtonian fluids. So you can really look at, you know, advanced hydraulics problems, like your if you're dealing with any type of val valve applications of hydraulics and, and a non-Newtonian fluid, it can handle that. Um, and then really when you start dealing with um, natural convection, um, you know, things that you really want to characterize with uh, variable density of the fluid, um, you have those capabilities there. So uh, gives you that, that flexibility. We have a pre-built uh, material database with AccuSolve, and we'll take a look at that when we jump into some of the examples. Uh, but if it's not in there, we can easily key in our own user-defined materials and then also factor in uh, specific temperature dependence uh, within the solution. And kind of the last thing I want to point out um, is uh, multi-phase capabilities. So uh, mixing problems, we actually will look at a turbo machinery problem um, within AccuSolve. So looking at a blower fan, um, things that can really be very difficult to do in some other CFD codes, uh, AccuSolve does a really good job with. Um, so a couple other things, we have a tool within our suite called EDEM. Um, that is a discrete element modeling tool where it looks at individual par particles. We can couple AccuSolve with a, with a discrete element modeling tool, which is EDEM. Um, so that's another uh, powerful capability um, for multi-phase applications. Uh, the last thing I'll touch on is what you're going to see me working through um, is within AccuSolve, um, it, it it operates within two different interfaces. So I ran a webinar a number of months ago. So it's on our YouTube page called SimLab. SimLab is a multi-physics tool. Um, so it has structural capabilities. And AccuSolve, which is the CFD solver, um, can be run within SimLab. The advantage of doing this is it allows you to couple systems. So if, say you want to run a, a thermal fluid uh, solid interaction problem, you know, looking at maybe thermal expansion stress, you can do that within SimLab. Um, uh, it doesn't have as much um, capability as this Hyperwork CFD. So Hyperwork CFD is the other tool where we solve AccuSolve. Um, Hyperworks is built on the HyperMesh engine. So it has a lot of advanced post-processing and pre-processing capabilities for meshing. Um, so there's much more enhanced control, a lot more sort of boundary condition uh, capabilities there. Uh, but with that being said, um, it's not quite as easy to couple uh, problems of SimLab. So when you, you know, uh, if you're looking at a license potentially with uh, AccuSolve, you have potential to run CFD um, in either of these tools and we'll actually run uh, within both so you can see that. All right, so let's jump into a couple examples here. So we'll first jump into um, 
uh, HyperWorks CFD. And we will kind of look at a, a nice example um, uh, to kind of take a look at kind of the model setup and kind of go over uh, the overview of, of, of how this tool is, is structured. So very similar to how HyperWorks is in the structural realm, um, across the board, Altair is known as being solver uh, and CAD agnostic. It's very much the same in HyperWorks CFD. So we can import you know, different solver decks if we want. So, you know, coming from other kind of competing solvers like Fluent, Navicus, Nastran, et cetera, et cetera we can bring those in. Um, but we can also bring in a num numerous uh, specific geometry files. So all the, the major CAD players as well as neutral file formats as well. Um, in our case, we're going to import a Parasolid file and go through the setup here. Um, note we can bring in assemblies or parts, so um, even specific bombs if you want to go that route. Um, but this is going to be kind of a just a straight intake manifold, um, kind of a classical CFD problem when you look at you know other CFD uh, applications. So when we look at this specific uh, model, one of the really nice things about it is you kind of have a part browser and a setup browser that kind of tells you where you're at in the setup of the process. One of the things that I, I really do like about AccuSolve, uh, because it's using a finite element uh, method-based approach um, within CFD, uh, when you start actually building meshes and solving problems, it tends to be very advantageous to have an FEM-based approach. Uh, and, you know, in the CFD space, you can utilize an FEM or uh, an FVM, finite volume method, um, finite volume method actually kind of creates a grid um, of points, which will actually show in um, Electroflow. At, you know, that's just using a different solver. So point being, because it's a finite element based CFD, um, meshing can be done. And then once you kind of create that mesh, you can utilize that mesh every single time. Whereas if a grid based mesh like FEM, it, it tends to be, you have to kind of recreate that mesh a lot and tends to be, has its disadvantages in certain routes. Um, so one of the things we can do is we can easily um, adjust our geometry. You know, my own experience, you know, running CFD models, I'd often be fed a, a model from a product designer, and then I'd have to go through and run it. One of the things that's nice about HyperWorks CFD is we can validate and see if there's any issues with um, our geometry. So specifically, um, you see right here, there's no issues. But if there was, you can see we have the, the power of um, Hypermesh here with some of the split and stitch commands, which are very advantageous to cleaning up geometry. So in this case, it's already prepped, but I just want to let you know you have that capability to kind of um, fix geometry if that pops into play. All right, so after we kind of set our geometry up, we can go through the process of setting up the model right here. So our flow tab right here, we can specify our physics. Um, like I already mentioned, there's some kind of advanced cap capabilities. So we do have multi-phase applications and um, we are using AccuSolve right here. You see the solver set as AccuSolve. Um, so we have multi-phase capabilities, but we're going to run an incompressible, um, kind of just a straight fluid model. But you see we can easily change our turbulence models, and everything's built into the GUI uh, specifically. Um, you know, here are our passive species. If we were doing a mixing problem, we could incorporate those as well. Um, the other thing that's nice about this is uh, we have the capability to sort of leverage and adjust solver controls to kind of help with convergence. Um, there's a pretty nice automated convergence process here. So when we're actually solving the Navier-Stokes equations in the background, um, if we need to kind of adjust the tolerance, we can, but I'm going to use the default for, for this system. Okay, so after we specify the physics, we kind of work our way from left to right here. Um, in a CFD problem, we have to specify our material. Um, in this case, we can click on the component here and specify the fluid. So like I said, there's a number of pre-built materials built into our library, but you can easily go to the material library and specify um, you know, what your material values are going to be. And if there's a temperature dependence, you can do that as well. I'm going to specify this as water and hit OK. And then we've de defined our uh, actual material in our system. Um, at this point, you know, there's a couple other things I, I'll point out. Um, if we have specific, you know, uh, porous membranes, or if there is a heat exchanger, uh, we could actually take advantage of some of these kind of advanced components here uh, within within the tool. In our case, um, it's just an inlet and outlet, so we can proceed to our boundaries of our system. So we go to our boundary conditions right here and specify our profiled uh, 
inlet, and then it can specify our value here of two meters per second. And you'll see one of the other really nice things about the interface right here is you'll know how everything is defined by a color. You'll also be able to kind of just create your own groups like you can in HyperMesh, where you can organize and set these values in. So like I said, when you start dealing with complicated systems, this becomes to be uh, very advantageous. Um, so we can hit the green check mark. That's our inlet. You'll see that an inlet populates here. I can easily just uh, right click and you know adjust it if it hit, hit edit, and I can go back and make changes if I want. Uh, but I'm good with that. And then I can go to my outlet condition here and specify the three outlet faces. And because they're just going to ambient pressure, we'll kind of keep the default pressure values here for outlet. So as we're kind of stepping our way through the GUI, we've now set up our boundary conditions. We have an inlet and outlet condition. Obviously, we could apply some other boundary conditions depending on the nature of the system. Like if we wanted to change our wall condition, um, have a slip condition, we, we could kind of apply those. But I'm going to keep these as the default boundary conditions. Um, a couple other things to point out if we're dealing with radiation, uh, you know, a heat transfer problem. I'll show a heat transfer problem in a moment. We could key in our kind of heat transfer uh, radiation models accordingly here. Um, so you see kind of there's a physics parameter here and you can specify what type of radiation model you want to utilize. So at this point, we now we can go to specifying the mesh. And the great thing about having uh, this the CFD tool, it has kind of advanced boundary layer meshing, which is very necessary when you start dealing with um, accurate CFD. So boundary layer being the transition from uh, the wall to the fluid. Um, in our case, we're first going to specify just a general surface mesh. So that's going to be all of our surfaces. Um, and we can do that by just right clicking and hitting select all. And then we can key in our specific uh, mesh control here. So a mesh control is just allowing us to localize um, a mesh density. Um, so we're not having a, a very fine global density. So we're just kind of localizing what we want our mesh density to be. So this is another advantage of the tool, it gives you kind of that flexibility so you don't have uh, additional elements um, more than what you need to kind of uh, help with your solve time. Um, Okay, so that looks good to me, my notes in terms of size. And then we can specify our boundary layer. And it's just a matter of um, selecting the wall. So one of the other really cool things about HyperWorks CFD is it has the capability of recognizing when you actually establish a domain, it'll actually search for the actual outer wall. Um, and so where your boundary layer is going to be. So I can actually right click at select and hit advanced select and then go by my boundaries and specify default wall. And you see it grabs everything that we want. You know, we don't have a boundary layer on where we're applying our bound, uh, our fluid flow conditions, but everywhere else uh, we want to have that boundary layer defined. So that's another kind of cool thing about some of the advanced selection commands within uh, HyperWorks CFD. It kind of automatically recognizes your domain very quickly. Um, another thing to point out, if you come into the tool, and in this case, we already have the fluid cavity established, maybe you have the solid geometry, you can easily uh, create the fluid cavity via just a basic plug command, and so it will actually create that fluid domain automatically for you. I know when I talk to some customers, that tends to be something they're looking for. Uh, we have that functionality uh, built into the tool. All right, so I'm just going to key in my sizes, so specifying the number of layers. Um, how it's going to potentially uh, change from the boundary layer to just this, you know, uh, the surface mesh and the, and the solid mesh. Um, so you can specify how it's going to specifically grow. Um, and then I can hit the green check mark. And now you see that I have my boundary layer assigned. Um, and now I can proceed to actually volume mesh the system. So I'm going to click on volume mesh. And then I can key in my size here. And then note we have the capability of, of advanced surface refinement. Again, the uh, engine that's utilized to mesh this tool is, is HyperMesh. So you have some very powerful capabilities um, in terms of meshing um, within the setup. So when I hit mesh, you'll see that um, it automatically brings up this dialogue right here. And you actually see I have the finished study right here. But it's going to mesh pretty quickly. One of the really cool things about it, it's going to show you the actual process down here at the bottom. Um, and if you have any specific issues occurring within any of the elements. So um, you can also go to the log file if there's an actual mesh failure. 
Um, so it will generally tell you if you have any issues. So again, the, the, the typical things that I've experienced in my own career from uh, a problem perspective are you know, pre-processing and meshing. And we have these tools built um, within HyperWorks that kind of illustrate um, where you need to make changes accordingly. So at this point, um, we've, we've meshed the, the system. We can actually zoom in and take a look. We see the mesh, great. Um, we can then proceed to actually um, running the system. So this is also something where you can take advantage of parallel processing. Um, so again, a lot of CFD codes do not have this capability. The, the kind of the big players like us and some of the others do, but um, you know, a lot of the other tools out there do not have this capability. And this becomes very, really important for turbo machinery or mixing problems when you, you know, traditional problems that may take a, a long time to solve unless you have parallel processing. So um, I've already run this model. It, it, it ran reasonably quick, but for the sake of uh, some of the models I want to show, I want to kind of transition to kind of just looking at the results. Um, so ran in a few minutes, um, but we're going to jump right into a finished model here. Um, so one of the cool things you do when you actually finish a model, what you can do is you can actually hit um, uh, open and specify results. I'm on the post tab right here and you see the log file um, where it actually has the actual information stored. And then we can begin post-processing. So the first thing we can do is we can kind of create what, what's known as a boundary group. And a boundary group is where you kind of specify a number of surfaces and you want to look at the properties. So in this case, um, I want to look at the kind of the outer wall and what the pressure value values are. Um, the really cool thing, there's a lot of post-processing capabilities here in terms of how you kind of visualize and look at results. So, um, you know, if you're a kind of a legacy CFD guy, you can easily kind of make changes to this if you want. Um, you know, if you want to kind of change the actual uh, color or system, you can do that. Uh, you have that flexibility um, to kind of make that change. And let me kind of just do that real quick. Right click hit edit. So we're showing pressure right now. And what I mean by is if you, you know, uh, you know, if you've been doing CFD in the past or maybe it's been a while, um, you can change this to be kind of a legacy um, kind of pattern, which is kind of that typical um, rainbow uh, uh, value. And right now we're just showing our pressure values um, across these surfaces. So we could you know, individually look at anywhere in the system. Um, what we could also do is go by kind of creating a plane. So sometimes, obviously, these are the outer surfaces, but on the interior, we want to, we want to know what's happening to the fluid. So we can actually create a slice plane right here. So you kind of see this is uh, uh, showing at a specific value. If I want to kind of turn on the legend here so we can see it, this is showing my pressure value. But maybe I want to change this to velocity. So go to velocity and hit the green check mark. You can kind of see what's happening on the velocity end. Um, I can show another kind of cross cut here. So kind of showing. Um, right here within the actual plane itself, and you kind of see directly what's happening. Um, the, the other really cool thing about this is I'm showing a contour, but I can easily show vectors. Um, so if I want to show vectors here and then it, the green check mark, I can kind of create the vectors. Uh, I think I need to adjust these a little bit. Okay. And there you go, there's the vectors. Um, so you can kind of see, and, and you might want to adjust these um, to be a little bit smaller. Uh, so uh, you can kind of do that. So you can kind of adjust these and you get a better feel for what's happening from an eddy uh, perspective. You can also change on to um, uh, kind of a line perspective. Let me turn off the vectors here and kind of create that. And you can kind of see some, some specific lines and go that route. But the other kind of power of the tool is we can also show the entire part here, which I have um, in transparency mode. And then maybe I want to turn on some streamlines. So in this case, I could animate the streamlines. And what it's showing is the overall velocity here. So if I hit come in and let me actually edit this so you can see kind of the legend here. So and we might want to move zoom out a little bit so we can see that. Okay. And let me change this to uh, velocity. Um, one of the really cool things about this tool is we have ways of kind of adjusting the seeds. So the number of lines for the sake of this webinar and my graphics card, I didn't crank up 
the uh, seeds. That's why we're only seeing a couple lines right here. Uh, but you can kind of increase this to as whatever you want. Um, in post-processing and CFD, it's really important to have a pretty good graphics card. Um, but we can kind of calculate. And then you know, if I want to change the color map here again, I can change it to be kind of like that classic uh, CFD uh, based uh, view. And then obviously I can animate this um, and I can kind of adjust the frame rate and I can even save this out for design reviews. So if I hit play, I can see the animation where the kind of velocity spots are. And um, so a lot of post-processing capabilities built into the tool. All right, so I'm gonna transition. I'm gonna take a look at um, another model here. So I'm gonna jump into uh, SimLab. Um, so SimLab is the other CFD interface. Um, like I said, I ran a webinar a few months ago focusing in on SimLab, so I encourage you to check it out. It's on our actual um, uh, YouTube page. Uh, but one of the really cool things about where, you know, HyperWorks CFD, the tool I was just showing you, is this, it's just CFD. Um, you know, this tool actually has full multi physics capabilities, meaning that I, in this case, I could run some, you know, run a CFD case and then also then easily couple it and then run a structural case. And I'll show a quick example of that. In this case, I kind of just wanted to show a more advanced model. We kind of started off with a basic model. Um, and this is uh, you know, where AccuSolve has a lot of uh, power and capability when it starts dealing with mixing or, or, or turbo machinery problems um, because of its uh, ability to leverage parallel processing and take advantage of more cores. Um, so in this case, we have, um, uh, kind of a, a, a fan here. If I kind of you know, kind of show you, you kind of can take a look. There is the interior. So it's a traditional blower fan, something you'd see in a, you know a classical HVAC uh, a fan application. One of the things we can easily do is we can set up a, a, a fluid flow study, um, and we'll first kind of take a look at the results here um, for a steady state. With a blower fan, it's tech. You know, it's not really a steady state problem but we're gonna actually feed our results from steady state and set up a transient problem so you can see it. Uh, so we kind of see right here, we see our velocity. One of the other things you'll note um, within SimLab, it's, it's, it is unit enabled. So you'll see units versus in the HyperWorks interface that's unitless. Um, so we can see units in velocity, pressure, uh, eddy viscosity, which is very important for turbulence. Um, so being able to kind of zone in on these specific parameters you'd be after when you're looking at a CFD uh, based application. So obviously, like I said, this is modeled as um, steady state. So let's actually go through the process of how we would model this for a transient problem. So one of the cool things we can do is we can just, we'll, we'll go through this setup together just so you guys get a feel for how you can set things up in uh, SimLab for CFD. So what, I, what I'll actually do is I'm gonna right click on this study and hit duplicate. And I'm gonna actually model this as transient. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rename this study as a webinar. And then what I can then do is right click on it and specify transient. And then I can actually just actually specify the time step. So with, with um, uh, turbo machinery problems, one of the things that how you typically model it is through a sliding mesh or a moving mesh where those fan blades are, are actually rotating. So we need to specify our overall time step size. Um, and I think it's this is going to be our size. And then our final time is going to be 0.12. So it's going to be relatively quick. Uh, but we really want to make sure you know how our fans are rotating is giving kind of a realistic understanding of what's happening. One of the other things that's really nice about AccuSolve and RCFD tools is how easy it is to define some of these advanced applications. In this case, we need to specify where the moving mesh is going to be. So I'm going to change it to be specified. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to delete this, this reference frame because that's from the steady state problem. And what I need to do now is I actually need to specify. Um, so I have an inlet condition right here. So the inlet conditions coming in to stagnation pressure. And then I have an outlet condition. Um, just ambient pressure. And then what we'll actually have is on the actual mesh motion, it, the interior, I'm going to have a, a kind of a rotating region of, um, you know, that those blades are going to be rotating. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide the outer so I can grab this interior where the actual fan is. And then I'm going to click on mesh motion. 
So right here at the top are all our boundary conditions. That's how they're organized within SimLab. And the cool thing is, even though this is a slightly different interface, you'll see that all the button icons are identical to what you see in HyperWorks CFD. Um, so uh, it should be fairly familiar to what you're seeing in HyperWorks CFD. So I'm going to specify translation or rotation right here. And then I can click on the body and then specify um, you know, how I want this rotation to be. Really nice thing is I can just click on this arc and it's automatically going to look through the center of it and then create that rotation for me. Um, if I want to reverse that axis, I can, but I'm pretty happy if that direction accordingly. Um, so right here, I can specify the speed. Um, I could do a multiplier on it. So again, you know, you're not limited by just, you know, a constant value. You can have kind of fluctuating values, which again is kind of the power of the tool. So when I hit OK, you'll see in my study now that I've defined my actual uh, moving mesh here. One of the other things that is generally a requirement for sliding mesh problems is uh, uh, having um, kind of a, a good sort of starting point of what the fluid volume is. And that's why typically, you know, you'll run a steady state problem before, and then you can feed in kind of what those initial uh, velocity, pressure, and eddy viscosity values are. All I have to do is right click and it include velocity. And you see that it automatically can grab those boundary conditions from that previously solved study, that steady state problem of what the initial velocity is gonna be. I can also do that for pressure and then for uh, 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 viscosity. So at this point, I've now set up the system. I'm ready to solve the problem. One of the other things that's really nice about um, uh, our tools is our total customization in terms of nodal output or output responses. So in, in CFD, specifically of turbo machinery, you might have really you know, big problem sets. And so what we can do is we can kind of change the frequency um, so we can only save data that we need to save. So in this case, we can save our, 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 our frequency condition, like how often we're going to save data and how many time steps we're going to specify. So I've already run this model. This model actually ran reasonably quick, kind of, I think in a, about less than 10 minutes on a four core machine. Um, you know, when you look at turbo machinery, they can, they can take a long time to solve. So it, it is something that where our, our solver tends to be very advantageous. So if we take a look at um, our results now, um, SimLab has a ded dedicated uh, post-processor, very similar to how HyperWorks CFD is. So we can visualize results within the tool. Uh, but one of the cool things I'll do is I'm just going to create a cross section here and I'm going to animate it. So it's going to take a little bit of time to generate this animation because there's 110 steps. So I'm just going to keep my mouse steady here, but eventually you're going to see those fan blades start to rotate. Um, and the cool thing is we can post process and look at any of these time steps, you know, what the specific values are. So, uh, again, just being a little bit patient here, cause we're on a webinar, I have a couple windows. So you can kind of see right here as it's rotating, kind of truly showing you what would be very very challenging to do in a lot of other CFD codes, uh, animating a, a sliding mesh problem. So great. Um, we can also, if we want, turn this off. Um, we can easily change the time step here. So you see all the time steps. I can go to any of these individual time steps and localize it. Um, I can then, if I want to go to an ISO surface plot and hit apply, and then kind of see directly what's happening at that point. And I can even animate it to kind of see what's happening you know, as it changes. So a lot of post-processing capabilities built into the tool. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about before I hop back into my slide deck is also the capabilities of coupling our, our solvers. Um, so coupling our solvers, meaning, um, uh, you know, say I, in this case, we have another CFD study here that was run within AccuSolve. So again, I'm within the SimLab interface here. And, uh, all I have to specify is our inlet conditions. So right here, this is actually a combination study where I actually have uh, uh, flu a fluid flow. So eight meters per second on all these faces here. And note, if you're wondering, it's all just mouse click. That's, I think that's the other really nice thing. Everything's built into our GUI in terms of setup. Um, and then we also have kind of a hot temperature coming in of 700 Kelvin. So it's a combination uh, thermal problem and fluid flow problem. And then at our outlet here, we actually have um, uh, ambient pressure at this outlet. So this outlet face right here. And um, 
We also have a wall condition. So we just have an ambient convection heat transfer coefficient being applied on the wall. So this is an application where we actually are modeling the solid and the fluid. So you kind of see there's an outer pipe here. So right here, and then we also have the fluid. Like I said, we have automated tools. You know, we can automatically create a fluid geometry for us if you don't have this in your CAD tool. Um, so we can create that. That was done automatically within this system. Um, so great. Um, we've, we've, we look, we have modeled the setup and then we actually take a look at our results. And what we can see, if we look at the results, is we see a variety of temperature values. Um, let me go back to the ISO clipping here. So we can just kind of see what happens to the temperature value. Uh, very, very hot at the inlet. And then as it flows towards the outlet, it kind of cools down, which makes sense. Um, we can also take a look at the pressure value. Um, so, you know, kind of what's happening to the pressure as they kind of all converge, you know, higher velocity there. And then also maybe looking at uh, pressure, um, which also is very advantageous when you're looking at a pressure gradient in the system. So obviously there's a, a lot of values we're kind of obtaining from the CFD study. One of the things that we want to be aware of is as we're heating this pipe up and also flushing um, air, and it's not kind of a uniform pipe, we want to factor in those pressure loads and that, that actual, uh, those thermal loads into a structural study. So all we need to do to do that is we just need to, you know, create a new solution here. And you see that it's a linear static solution. So it'd be, be a product of right-clicking and then create solution, specifying linear static and then clicking on both bodies. And again, this tends to be very nice because with a lot of um, other tools, it's not as easy or uh, seamless to be able to do this. Um, and then once we create that study, it's just a matter of specifying the boundary conditions. So let's step through that real quick. So the boundary conditions in this case is there's just a couple phase constraints here. So there's just a restraint on the edge here. You kind of see I'm restraining this face. So I'm holding these faces in place. And then all I have to do um, to bring in those, those temperature gradients and those pressure gradients is right-clicking on loads uh, and constraints and then mapping those in. So you kind of see I was able to bring those directly in to the system. So if I had set current here, you'll see if I right-click and it include temperature from flow. So this looks very familiar to the blower application I just showed you all, as well as the pressure application. So you'll see directly, it does everything automatically. It maps all these pressure and temperature conditions directly onto the system. Um, and then when I actually look at the results here, you'll see that I actually have static stress values because remember, this is a linear static study. So I actually have my stress and displacement values all generated from CFD. So remember, I didn't actually have all the loads I'm getting are straight from my CFD solution. Um, same post-processing, so I could take a look at an ISO surface here, look at critical displacement values. Um, maybe I want to look at critical stress values here, you know, trying to see where I'm at with stress values and, um, you know, trying to look at these individual values. So you kind of have some flexibility in terms of how you look at these values. All right, so I'm going to hop back into my slide deck. Um, and I want to talk about another tool. Obviously, like I said, it's a short webinar. I can't talk about every single application, but I want you guys to kind of get exposed. Another great tool we have within our CFD framework is Altair Electroflow. So AccuSolve is a, a finite element based CFD solution, which allows you to kind of mesh the tools and makes it very uh, capable for uh, large scale problems. Um, but when you start dealing with um, electrical components, which are very, very small on a PCB, um, when you try to mesh with a kind of a, a traditional FEA based approach, you can start running into some, some problems. So Electroflow actually utilizes um, a, a finite volume method based approach. So this means you're kind of creating a grid of cells and it allows you to kind of mesh very, very small components. So uh, as a result, this tool is very great for um, uh, PCB applications, electronics enclosures. These types of applications are, are where this, this tool shines. Um, capable of, you know, when you're looking at PCB applications, you're probably concerned with some type of thermal management application. So you're going to be looking at heat transfer for both steady and transient, and then all modes of heat transfer. So conduction, convection, free and forced, and, and then also radiation. Uh, additionally, one of the things that's nice about this tool versus some of the other tools that you may, may be familiar with is we have full capability to not only import CAD, but also ECAD data. So ECAD being, you know, coming from Altium or Cadence, whatever, we can import, you know, those boards specifically in those components. 
So with that being said, let's jump into an example just to kind of show this. Um, so hopping back into SimLab. Um, so again, um, the electronics, uh, this Electroflow solver is built into um, SimLab. So right here, this electronics thermal, um, and we're modeling it within this interface. Um, so a couple of things you'll see here is we have our individual board and a number of components. So again, kind of the capability to import, you know, the PCB and the components. And actually, this is kind of a pretty small board. It's a good demo model, but we can bring in a lot of components. I've worked with customers with very large components. It's definitely a, a capability within, within our tool. Um, I'm going to hide the results here so we can kind of see these. And so we have our individual components. And so like I said, how this tool functions, it kind of creates a grid. That's how a lot of other CFD codes function, where it creates a grid in the X, Y, and Z and kind of maps the uh, uh, mesh via that method. So when we actually go to um, the analysis tab right here, you'll see you have kind of, you know, the things, you know, where our tool shines because we bring in ECAD data, we can specify our layer definition or for our vias, um, our individual component definitions. Um, and then one of the other things you'll see right here is this computational domain. So this is how much of the system you're going to mesh. So everything in this domain is going to be the air and also the solid cells. So this is how you're meshing within this tool. When we look at the boundary conditions here, you'll see your individual conditions. We can click on a component and then specify, you know, how much heat dissipation there's going to be. Again, we have the capability for um, multipliers. You know, if something's not going to be necessarily constant the whole system, we can do that. Um, a couple other thing that, things that are pretty nice within our tool is we have capabilities for fans, so fluid flow, and then a two-resistor component for chips, so we can actually model those. And in this system, we actually have a two-resistor component. It's this big yellow chip right here, and we can specify the individual resistance um, from the junction to board and junction to case. So if you're dealing with um, PCB design, this is probably something you're, you're looking for if within, within a CFD solver. We have this capability. So if we actually look at our results now, um, pretty cool. We can look at anywhere in the system. Um, I'm looking at nodal temperature. I can look at nodal velocity. And maybe I want to actually look at through the plane. So I can actually look through the plane, and I can move it in and out. So how is that velocity kind of changing? Maybe I want to add a fan to the system to cool my board. I can do that and model it within our tools. Um, this system solves almost instantaneously. So again, just it's very beneficial to kind of have these these tools at your fingertips. Um, so we see our temperature here. Um, the other thing is we can right click and a query result and, and look at any individual component and, and understand what that temperature value is going to be. Great. Let me um, hop back to my slide deck here. So it kind of brings us to the end. Um, again, I wanted to kind of get you guys exposed to some of our tools. Obviously, there's a lot of specific capabilities um, within our suite. Um, I encourage you to kind of check out our blog. Um, we're definitely writing new blogs consistently on various tools across the board, so check that out. Um, and then keep an eye out for future webinars. Um, we typically post these events on our, our website or via you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera. And then our YouTube page um, has a number of uh, videos. We'll, we'll post this webinar um, today. And like I said, I mentioned the SimLab webinar and we actually have a couple other webinars posted on our, our YouTube page. Uh, go check it out as well as some short videos. So I will spend some time here um, just sitting in the chat if any of you guys have any questions. Uh, so we'll just, you know, turn it over to see what questions you guys may have. Any questions? I will stick around the chat. Um, if you don't have any uh, further questions, uh, feel free to hop out, but I will stick around for a few minutes to see um, if any of y'all have any questions. Oh, sure, Charles, no problem.
So good question. Um, so Ed, uh, we can take advantage of GPU and AccuSolve. So all, all of our solvers can be run on a GPU. Typically AccuSolve tends to benefit more from CPU. Um, the specific GPU solver, which you probably saw me mention in the beginning was UltraFluidX. Um, so for inc incompressible flow for LBM based applications. So we can, that's, that's exclusively GPU. It does not handle its CPU. Um, the AccuSolve, which is most of the examples I ran through today, uh, use, can use both. Typically, CPU tends to be better. Um, it, it, they're, they're, GPU can be advantageous with very large problems, but that, that's generally the case. Great, did I, did I answer your question, Ed? Yep, UltraFluid X. That that's the solver that's optimized for GPU. So if I go back in my slide presentation here, let me share my screen. I'm just going to share it real quick. So it's UltraFluid X is that is that solver. Any other questions? Okay, I, I think I'm gonna end, end the session here. Um, I, uh, I'll put my uh, email in the chat. If you do have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but thank you all for attending, um, and I hope you have a, a good rest of your day, and hopefully we can chat again in the future. Take care, everyone.